right, so a lot of you guys requested a video about how to make irregular cuts in a mesh. So in this case, I have this part of Loki's helmet, which is part of this, which is part of a commission for a dude. Hello, dude, if you're watching this. But I'm going to show you guys just really quick as a quick demo how to sort of slice along this line in case you need to do something like that for a piece that you're working on. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is actually basically make a shape that covers the area you would like to cut out of your model, that covers what will soon be one of the two pieces of your model, if that makes sense. Basically, we're just going to be using booleans to sort of cleverly cut out pieces of a model in a way that achieves the desired result. So right now I'm using Maya. You can use pretty much most 3D software that's like decent should be able to do this. I prefer Maya because just what I know. Uh, you could also use Blender. It has all the same functionality, basically just a free version of Maya. You could even do this in Mesh Mixer if you wanted to, which I don't, so I'm not going to. But yeah, so basically just make a shape. If you're not familiar with anything that I'm doing, sort of time lapse here, uh, check out some of the other videos that I have on my channel. Uh, I'll link anything that's relevant in the description. So now that I have like the, the basic sort of shape done, uh, what I'm going to do is just run through and really quickly uh, go to Mesh Smooth to add some more subdivisions to this so that the final cut isn't really jaggedy and gross looking. Uh, it's going to be a much smoother line. So basically subdivide it until you're happy with the smoothness of the line on the top where you want to cut. To do this, I'm just going to go and select my entire object of that weird shape I just made, go to the Extrude tool. So once I extruded that, um, you can see that the object is, as I mentioned, completely inside the object. Uh, you'll also notice that it has for some reason turned black. Don't freak out, that's just the normals reversing uh, because I scaled or moved the faces quote unquote backwards. Um, so if you just go reverse, uh, it will fix that and make your mesh look correct again. I paused at this point to go in and do a mesh reduce to make my mesh less dense so that it didn't take as ungodly long time to pull the things. So that's what I'm doing here. Nothing else is happening. At this point, we're ready to actually start cutting apart our model. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is select both of your objects and then duplicate them. Do Control D is duplicate in Maya. Uh, you can see that I now have a copy of my object. So once that's done, I'm going to click on the original model and then I'm going to click on that weird Boolean sort of shape that I just made. And then I'm going to go up to Mesh, Booleans, Difference. I'm going to do Control 1 to isolate select the piece that was just made. And you can see that it is the exact same top part of the helmet, it's just missing that little piece that was intersecting with the Boolean that I made. Which is pretty much exactly what we wanted. So you'll notice if you look at the inner edge of this, um, the mesh is no longer solid. There is like a giant hole running around the entire cut. Sometimes Maya does it with booleans. Don't freak out. Just select your object, go back to the mesh menu, and then do fill hole. It might take a minute to process, but basically what that does is it's going to create a giant n-gon of terror, but it'll patch the hole. But don't put that in a slicer. It's going to make it cry super hard. So once you have your giant n-gon, uh, what you're going to want to do is basically triangulate that. So once again, select your object, go to the mesh menu, and then just go to clean up. And you can see my settings here. Um, basically, you just want to do uh, operate on selected object only. And then under the fixed by tessellation tab, select uh, faces with more than four sides. Uh, basically, just a really long way of saying endons. Um, so click that, hit apply. What it's going to go through and do is basically tessellate the crap out of any endons it finds, uh, which includes that giant endon that the fill hole command made. Um, so now you can see that we now have a slightly less horrific mesh. Um, I usually do this towards the end of the whatever I'm doing because the fact that this is now triangulated does make it harder to work with and select edge loops, but it's certainly preferable to end gons or having to manually patch in the hole. So I'm just going to hide that real quick. I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, so I'm going to do another boolean of a different type. So select both of your objects, again the, the helmet and the weird little bull shape, and then go again to the mesh menu, booleans, and this time you're going to want to do intersection. So what that's going to do, instead of cutting the second object out of the first, it's going to say, hey, wherever these intersect, that's what I'm keeping, and everything else is just going to get deleted. Now you'll notice that it is, once again, not as many n-gons as before, but there are still a bunch of n-gons. Uh, so 
you will need to, again, go back in and just do a mesh cleanup to that. It's gonna triangulate everything and it should be good. At this point, what you should be left with, I'm gonna unhide that first piece of helmet, is something that looks effectively like a solid helmet, but you'll notice that it is two pieces. I'm able to move these around independently and I'm able to go through and export them as individual meshes. So just select the first piece, go to file, export selection, select whatever file type you like. I am partial to OBJs and then just export them and keep doing that until you're done. All right, so I'm gonna run through that again as sort of a little bonus thing, show you how to do something a little bit different. So this time would be something like if you wanted to cut a piece but have a certain tolerance uh, between the pieces and not have them butt perfectly up together. So basically pick wherever you want, make your shape like you did before. I made a horrible looking cylinder. Uh, and then what you're gonna do is you want it to be a plane, um, select your object and then go through with the extrude tool, select your object and then use the extrude tool again to give it thickness. Uh, this time you're gonna wanna focus on the local translate Z value that shows up in the little pop-up. So this is based, whatever number you enter is based off of the default units for Maya. So make sure that you know what your units are, mine or millimeters. So when I say two, it's gonna be move this two millimeters. Uh, so this time it's gonna be pretty much just a simple Boolean difference uh, like the first piece that we did. So select your main object, in this case, top of the helmet, then select your weird Boolean shape you just made, and then go up to mesh, Booleans, difference. And then once that's done, it should punch a giant hole in your model, pretty much the same way it did before. You will definitely need to go in and do a mesh cleanup on that but you should now have a hole in your object. So you'll notice that Maya is still labeling these as a single piece, which doesn't really make sense because there's clearly no connection between these two. Uh, really simple fix for that. Select your object and go to mesh, separate. So you can do this, obviously for this one, you'll notice that there's now two separate movable pieces, which again can be moved independently, exported independently. This is also gonna work if you download, say, armor for a hand and there's like 10 different pieces in a single file and you need to separate them, just bring it into Maya, do a mesh separate, and then export all the pieces individually ready for slicing. You could even, if you were so inclined, like line them up however you wanted for the build plate in Maya. And that, my good people, is all I have for you today. Uh, if you're interested in some of the more basic tutorials, which I mentioned but may have not recorded yet, cough, uh, you should just subscribe to my YouTube. They'll be here eventually when I have time. So hopefully that was helpful. If you guys have any questions or you have your own ways that you like slicing files for like weird shaped stuff. Let me know in the comments. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I need to go eat food, so see you guys. <laughs>